I'm Larry O'Brien. I'm the Global Marketing Manager for the uh, Fieldbus Foundation, and I'm here uh, today with Brian Root from uh, Rockwell Automation at our end user seminar in Carson, California. And uh, we have several uh, demos uh, set up this week that we're showing uh, to, to show some of the functionality of Foundation Field Bus. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming this week. Thank you. Um, maybe you could show us a little bit what you're uh, demoing this week and, and just uh, give us sort of the quick, uh, you know, three-minute capsule explanation. Well, sure. Here we have uh, Foundation Field Bus with multiple vendors. We have uh, displays. We have temperature transmitters. Uh, pressure transmitters and valves. What we're trying to show at this seminar, particularly, control on the wire in the field bus. So we're using an FFLD in our software package to program these instruments and then have them control uh, the, the loops within themselves on the wire. So if this would go away, they would still be able to control on the H1 foundation field bus. A few key points I want to point out and explain to you what we have as a demo here. Uh, first thing is following the guidelines in uh, the manual that we have for the system engineering guidelines. It says correct ranges, alarm handling, failure modes for transmitters, and also the control valves. We want the correct operation, limits, and feedback, and failure modes set up in the field bus when you do this. I'm not going to cover that today. I'm covering more of the blocks, how they connect together, and then the shed mode. What we have is a Rockwell system. Notice the controller here. The controller isn't really doing anything in this, la this demo. Right now, we are working with a host that actually goes through Ethernet, through HSE, to the FFLD, and then out to two different, two separate H1 controllers through my FFLD up here. Uh, this is a bridge, uh, it's our FFLD linking device, and it's connected through HSE, and this is the power supply, I'm sorry. This is the FFLD, two lines, one through a power supply with, a, with a, the MTL diagnostic module. And then we go out to a Bika, which is here. This is a display. We have a Topworks valve, which is over here, that's on the other H1, sorry. Uh, we have a uh, Additionally, a Invensys valve, or Invensys uh, differential pressure. This is a Vita, or it's not a Vita, this is a Yamataki uh, valve. And then we have the 848T Emerson temperature transmitter, and we have a SMAR analog out. Basically, we're controlling the analog out to uh, uh, control a light, and the light then drives, here I'll show you this light here drives the 848T, so we have a closed loop pretty much. So we're going to show that, and then the Beco will be our display on the output. Uh, how this works is within the SMAR analog output FFL, or analog output device, it's got a PID and an analog output. We're using both of these in this device. We're then going to use the analog in from the 848T, which represents the temperature controller, which is a, a thermocouple, and then it's just going to go out to this Zika uh, uh, display. So this is going to analog, heat up the light, and close the loop. I'm going to go over a few things. We have an analog input block. This is a standard block. We have an analog out, and this is coming from the device putting out an analog signal, which is digital in the form. Then we go to the advanced PID, which is in, and it goes to the PID controller, and then out. <coughs> Additionally, we have an analog cascade in, which will be taking the uh, signal from the PID, and it will be going out to the beca. and additionally, the back calc out will go back to the back calc in, on this PID right here. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's going to look like this. This is the temperature transmitter, this is the current output, and this is the display. This is all the user level layers in the devices. <coughs> Go back to here. Okay, so 
So function block has modes. Auto service, manual, auto, cascade, and they're they're allowed from lowest to highest. So if something happens, you get the highest level. If if that highest level isn't isn't available, it goes to the next one down. So that's how it works. So scaling. We have to scale the units for PIDs, as you all know. If you have a unit value of a set point of percent, your feedback has to be in percent. So it, it can calculate the PID properly to give you the, the proper control variable out. Wow. <clears throat> now, if we disconnect the thermal couple here, we're going to see bad sensor failure not limited. That will propagate into the PID. It will load it into manual, and this will hold the output. Now you can set it up to go to low output, which is 4 milliamps, or you can set it up to go to high output. But that's all dependent on how you figure out how you want this loop to work. So the default behavior is last, last position. That's correct. I want to show you how this, how this system works. We have field bus networks. It comes with an HSE host, which is this RS field bus software. And it's done through an OPC HSC based back, uh, background on how it exchanges data to the system. So over at HSC, we get to the FFLD and we're separated into two networks. H11, we named it. H12 is the other one. Now we're online with this. So if I would expand it, we would get each one of these devices and we set up each one, each of the devices on the network are then put onto each H1. Like for H11, which is the first, first H1, we have a TT100, a Beacon display, a TC100, and then the F89F. The other one has additionally four other devices, a TT200, a CV200, a PT100, and a CV303. You're asking what these are, well we could go down into it and look at attributes, and it says here it's a Yamataki AVP. It has device route, and it actually has the ID number for the device. This device also is highlighted here, or it's under highlighted as basic, meaning that it's not link active scheduler, or it's not the, the backup link active scheduler. So it's just a basic device on the network. We could change that and make it the uh, the uh, link active scheduler or the backup, but we chose to uh, make another device that. So basically, what we have, as John was talking earlier, you have two link active schedulers and backup type devices. Well, in this case, we use the AB, we use the FFLD as the bridge and also the master on the link. And the backup is the TT200 right here. It's the backup link master. <coughs> Additionally, the FFLD is the master on the other link. And in this case, the TC100, the SMART is the backup link master. So we're sitting here. I set up this little control valve scenario. We're going to enlarge this. Can everybody see that? We have two situ situations. We have we have this this controlling off of this temperature transmitter and this controlling off this rose one. <coughs> Everything says green, meaning it's all okay. This one's putting out 5.75 well, actually, this one's putting out uh, the, that one is the, the actual 5.75 uh, milliamps. And the, the other one's a percent. So, if I take this light, I change the set point. Right now, the set point on this device is at 55, 
and we know that the incoming is 41. Does everybody see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. We want to, if we want to raise that, what do we have to do with that device? <laughs> that analog set point should be lower or higher to make it go higher? Higher. Higher, right? Well, let's say I put it at 100. Just put that at 100. It should drive my light up. So this this display here is going to get bigger. This number is going to start climbing, and the display here should start going up. So if I put it in auto, you see it going up. It went up to seven, and it's climbing. Now I take it back down. The light's maxed out right now. I take it down to 50. And you'll see the light go back down. Are you still on the set point? It went down to 40. Four. The light went out. I just saw it. And everybody else see that? So. The other thing we could do, if I bring it back up and turn the light back up, <coughs> the light goes up, we're going to take off the temperature to this device. Does everybody see the light staying on? Basically up here, you're going to get a bad quality you see the output stays. <coughs> if you look at the PID right here, it went to manual. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So then, like John was saying, since it's at the default mode, I put it back on. Once it sees that that quality is good again, you'll see it go back into auto. Does 